here underneath their stands. Boy, this is a treat for me. David McFatridge. Gosh, this is taking me back to a time warp. We're over here at Mississippi State, invited to participate in the Bulldog Invitational, get a chance to chat with Fatch, and I just really appreciate you if you want to sit down and chat, first of all. Absolutely, man. Good to see you again, too. We uh, had a lot of conversations when I was in the Southland Conference. It was always a blast, and Stephen, off, Stephen F. Austin was always a, a tough opponent. You know, we talked about we met at UCA. You've been, you were very successful there. What can you attribute uh, to what you learned about coaching or what did you bring here? What did, the, what did the UCA experience do for you in order to prepare for this step to come into the SEC? Well, uh, I can't say for sure, man. Uh, UCA was a, there was a great experience at UCA. I had, uh, you know, one of the best athletic directors in the country, to be honest with you, and Brad Teague, Dr. Teague. You know, I had great support. Natalie Shock, you know, Natalie and all those people there. Was just, the fans were fantastic. Everything was good. Um, the uh, the environment at the Prince Center, we just loved playing there. We were confident in playing there. And, you know, that those teams that we had, you know, I look back, I was thinking about it yesterday, some of the teams that we scheduled when I was there. And people, I remember some people in the ACC calling me up, what are you doing scheduling Penn State? Well, it's fun. We like it. I like the challenge. And we – you know, we scheduled Penn State, and we scheduled number two Oregon, and we scheduled number three Florida State, and we scheduled number nine Kansas and beat them, and we scheduled uh, 11 Marquette. We had so much Purdue and Washington. It was just so much fun, and uh, and uh, so those eight years that I was at Central Arkansas just uh, were fantastic, and everything about UCA I remember fondly. Coming here, it's a little different. I got to tell you, we. Um, we got here, and it was, uh, you know, it's now you're in the SEC. It, it is different in the SEC. It's still volleyball. But uh, we inherited a team that, you know, had kind of fallen on hard times. And, uh, you know, we were able to improve the ranking 130 points in two years. And, but we've got to get uh, – we've got to be – we've got to be a little bit bigger. We've got to be a little bit more athletic. And uh, but we've got kids in here now. I, I'll, I'll be candid with you, Greg. I feel like it's taken me two years to get to year one because there's so it's so different. There are so many things you've got to learn about scheduling, about your opponents, about the toughness of the SEC, about, you know, it, there's just it's just a lot of stuff to learn. So I feel like it's taken me two years to do that. But we have 13 players on our roster this year and I've got 10 new faces and we're chasing great together, and it's a blast coaching this group. You talked to me off camera about that you've seen some other Southland Conference schools. Obviously, you've, uh, you've maintained connections with the Southland, inviting us here. What does that mean to you? What is, it, is it important to you to continue to kind of keep those old ties, bring clubs like ours in here, and maintain those Texas and Louisiana connections? It means the world. I mean, you, when you're at uh, Central Arkansas for eight years, you, you get to know the teams, you get to know the coaches, and Coach Humphreys, you know, not very many people have been at one place for 20 plus years and have had the success that she she has had. She's, she's a tremendous coach. Year in and year out, you can count on Stephen F. Austin to be a very very tough opponent. And we had to start scheduling tougher this year, and that's why I asked Debbie to come, and she was glad to do it. So, uh, and then we played Stephen. We, or I'm sorry, we played Corpus Christi last week, and they're a good team, and they're very well coached, and uh, it, they they run an offense kind of similar to what we used to run at UCA. And I think Debbie's, Debbie's looks a little familiar too. And, uh, and, you know, and we also have uh, a McNeese state on the schedule. So I know the coaches, I know the South and it's a great conference. Everybody in the South and you guys, I, I'm going to tell you, you have a great conference with great leadership, really, really good coaches, really, really good volleyball. And so, yeah, my first option when scheduling opponents has been the Southland. What's been the thing that you've noticed the most in terms about athletes here in the SEC? Obviously, Power Five Conference, you're able to pull kids from, from all over, better quality athlete in general. But what's the main thing you've noticed just in terms of athleticism? Is it volleyball IQ? What, what's, the, what's the difference in the athlete? The difference in the athlete is um, the upper echelon of our league. Uh, the, the athletes are incredible. Uh, I will tell you this, when we played Florida last year, Greg, I, um, uh, the old athletic director here is now athletic director there, and I told him, I said, I have, never, I have never seen a college volleyball team with that many great volleyball 
players and volleyball athletes ever. And I'm the guy that scheduled Penn State twice. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, it's incredible uh, what they have, and they've got it again this year. And so we get to go up against that. For me, it's a joy and a privilege. I love it. I love those challenges. And as you know, I loved it when I was at UCA. That's why I schedule them. It's fun. It's fun for me as a coach. It's fun for for the players to to go up against teams like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, the top echelon of this league, uh, they're, they've got they've got either high volleyball IQ, high um, uh, volleyball ability, athletic or uh, athletic ability, and most of the upper echelon teams have all three. You mentioned earlier about support that you had both here at Mississippi State and when you were at UCA. A lot's been made recently about. Uh, either the ability or lack of to support volleyball, even in large conferences. What's your take on that? Have you seen that change as you talk with other coaches around your league or other leagues in terms of the support that volleyball gets from administration? From my, from my standpoint, eight years at Central Arkansas and going into my third here now, I have only seen the support go up every year. So I'm not, uh, I'm not familiar. I haven't heard from other coaches, I don't know what you know what what's going on with them. But for me, it's gotten better and better every year. At UCA, I had tremendous support. Tremendous support, man. Everybody was, it was so cool. Everybody was rowing the boat in the same direction, man. It was just awesome. And you know, you go out there, you give it your best, and and uh, you know, you win, great. If you don't, hey, let's get better. And and uh, you know, everybody there was totally behind us, and the fans got behind us. It. it got crazy there for a while. And so I come here, and the exact same thing happens. I mean, I've, I've had two – I'm lucky. I have had three great athletic directors. And so I have had nothing but support. My uh, athletic director here, John Cohen, uh, a week ago, we walked through the, through the uh, uh, facility together. He spent about an hour of his time with uh, an entourage of about 11 or 12 other people and he goes, hey, Fatchbo, what do you, you know, what do you need? Tell me what you're thinking. What are you thinking here? What are you thinking there? And and he wrote it down and he took pictures. And so, for, from my aspect, buddy, I got to tell you, it's all been great. That's good to hear. Let me give you a chance to sort of give you, uh, give us your state of your program here at MSU. Um, when you came here, did you develop a two-year plan, four-year plan, uh, just? Where do you think you are, and what do you think the next step's got to be to get to that higher level? Uh, that's a great question, and, yeah, I do have a plan. Uh, we, When I got here, we were ranked 257th, and um, and I've got a graphic in my office about where we were, 257, and then where we want to go, top 30, and I've got a bridge between the two that and, and with pictures and words about what it's going to take to get there. Number one, you know, to be candid with you, there are places in our conference that, you know, they just naturally, uh, kids are attracted there. They, they, they are inclined to go there. Let's just say it like it is. So I had to, the way I started was, okay, what are the barriers at Mississippi State? What is the deal here? And what are the barriers? And let's, let's look what the barriers are. And then figure out ways to overcome. And the first barrier, to be honest with you, is, uh, you know, historically, Mississippi State has been at the bottom of the conference. And that's been off and on for the most part of 42 years. Why is that? Is that because of volleyball in Mississippi? Yes, it partly is. And so we're working our tails off to get the state of Mississippi going. We have met with coaches, club coaches. We're trying to start a juniors beach tour next year. We're hosting the Mississippi State Championships this year for the first time. Everybody's on board. Uh, thankfully, our uh, my athletic director, John Cohen, is on board, and thankfully our president, President Mark Keenum, is on board too. Whatever you need to help develop volleyball in the state of Mississippi, we'll be glad to help. But the players aren't here. There's one player, there's one player from the state of Mississippi that's at Purdue and might be starting this year that I can think of in the last, you know, five to eight years that's playing at a high level of Division One. There was another player at, at Georgia last year, and then we have Chris Carr from right here in Starkville who didn't get to play club hardly at all in high school volleyball in the state. It's just not where it's going to be. So when you look at this, the United States and you look at volleyball and you look at Mississippi, this is like the last frontier. i got to be candid with you, but I know it can happen 
because 22 years ago or whatever, it was the same way in Arkansas, and we we got it going, and that's what we got to do here. You really hit on the last issue that I wanted to bring up. You know, when you were in the Southland, uh, and historically when you look at the Southland, uh, when UT Arlington was in the conference, when UT San Antonio was in the conference, and you have SFA and Sam Houston, we're in a geography where we pull a lot of kids from Houston and Dallas. Great volleyball in Texas. Yeah. Great volleyball in Houston, in Dallas, and San Antonio. Some of the best in the yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of the Louisiana schools in our conference, Southeastern, Nichols, and now UNO, have talked to me ad nauseum about the lack of high school and club volleyball there. But it sounds like that you're trying to do your part in terms of uh, growing that here in Mississippi. What sort of responsibility do you think that college coaches have to help grow the area volleyball program? Uh, I got to tell you, I'm going to I'm going to answer that question, but I'm going to back up first. So the same thing happened at UCA in the early days. I remember I remember an assistant coach from a from a um, a Southland school, they came up to play, and we were playing in the Prince Center. And this was probably my first year as a head coach there, 2011. And he walked into the gym, and he said, who are you? He looked at it, the Prince, you know it very well. And he, Greg, he goes, who are you going to get to come here? And he looked at that, and I'm like, so it's your perspective, right? Yeah. And we, we have the best game. I've played them all, and this is the best one. But he's looking at our facility he goes who are you going to get to come here and i'm i'm looking at it, i'm like are you kidding me man this is great so first of all i think i have to have the right perspective on everything and you f see our facilities and our potential here but but to answer your second question is my responsibility i think it i think i got to be one of the leaders i think it's my responsibility as the head volleyball coach at mississippi state to work my tail off to develop volleyball in the state of Mississippi. I mean, I'm, you know, we're not, we're not Florida, we're not Kentucky, we're not Missouri, we're not all those schools that have these great club programs. We don't have all Americans in our backyard. We don't have that. We have to figure out what will attract a player to Mississippi State. And, you know, I'm come, come to find out a, large, a lot of that is, you know, do they resonate with me? You know, am I gonna, am I gonna, is this gonna be four years for them and done or is it gonna be the next 40 or 50 years of their life? And I make the promise to these kids that it's going to be the next 40 or 50 years of their life. And that's starting to resonate with players. And we've got some arms coming in next year. For those of you that might be watching that, that are here local that are Mississippi State, Fatch talking about the Print Center. When you look at it there on the campus of UCA, it looks like an academic building from the outside. You wouldn't know it was a gym at all. You walk in, there's a small lobby, real small, tight. They turn the lights off in there and get crazy. One of the best facilities in the South. And when, when I ask other girls, and I asked two or three girls last year where they thought the toughest places were to play in the South, and SFA and UCA come up every time because yes. our two gyms are so loud. Yes. Fatch, thanks for so much. This is a little bit of homecoming for me. Here's, yes. a, here's a trivia you didn't know. I think some of the viewers know this. I taught this. W I taught at Mississippi State. I didn't know that. Uh, my first real job was here at Mississippi State in 1996, right after I got my Ph.D. I taught here for one year, lived in Starkville, and I went from Starkville to SFA. I've only been back two times, but uh, good to uh, sort of reminisce with you, Fatch. I really appreciate your time. This man has been, for those of you that are in Nacogdoches and just getting used to, uh, maybe you're the parent or a fan of a freshman or sophomore and getting used to our coverage, Fatch here was one of our biggest supporters when the blog got started, and we are now nine years in on covering SFA Volleyball. David, thank you so much for being on the chat, man. Great seeing you, bro.